you faking? Don't be fake. A couple of things stand out to me. First of all, Alrighty, hopefully you can see me. Um, I am going to do some devotional time with the Lord. Um, I made a TikTok about this, but this is not something that I do every day, unfortunately. Um, but it's something that I do strive to do every day. Um, and I just feel like it's so valuable to, you know, like set apart time in our day and our busy lives to just connect with the lord outside of like listening to worship music or outside of prayer outside of it but with it um i feel like this the bible these moments are literally like our guide our manual for day in and for day out and so if we could if we could meet ourselves here if we could find him here all that's where clarity is so I'm trying my best to do a better job of, of committing to communing with him daily. And one thing that has helped me is like, I literally just think about it like, if I had a man, I would want to talk to him every single day, all throughout the day. And the same, if not even more, should go for your relationship with God, your relationship with Christ. So I'm reading Matthew 26. I'm reading The Last Supper maybe it's 28 yeah okay i'm reading the, the last supper is matthew 26 verses 17 through about 30 um today is thursday april i mean march the 28th and so we're approaching easter so it's just perfect time to kind of read through the story of jesus's last moments as he you know enters into jerusalem and they're screaming hosanna and he tells all these parables the people get upset they're ready to put them on trial all this stuff and so i'm reading the whole story death burial resurrection that's where i am so yeah i always start with prayer uh so maybe if you want to do this with me let's do it together why not okay so i'll pray and you can you can pray too all right thank you lord for these First of all, thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for how amazing and how awesome you are, how great you are, how consistent, how loving you are. Thank you for the character and the nature of, of you are, who you are. I give you praise and honor in this moment. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to communicate with you, to connect with you, to find something new in your word. Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this word is a lamp. It is a resource. It is a tool. It is an um, instruction manual as we go out and we um, do life. Lord, thank you for leading this time. And I'm sorry in this moment. I pray that you would highlight things you could um, make your word come alive. I know before that you would take the word out of here and give it up by this to our day to day life. Lord, thank you for leading me now. I just ask the Holy Spirit that you would come and do your rest with me in this moment so that you would be my help and give me my eyes and my ears in this moment. Lord, you have your way. You have your way in this moment. I need permission to learn and to live in these moments. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Yay. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this quickly. I'm going to put this, I'll put what I'm reading on the screen and then maybe I'll meet you guys after because I feel like it might be redundant for me to kind of sit here and read it to you. Maybe I should. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm just going to do my thing and then I'll come back after. Yeah. I'm reading Matthew 26 verse 17 through 30. You go read and I'll go read and then we can come back. Yeah. So it says, on the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do, we, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time has come. I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told him and prepared the Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one adds in turn. Am I the one, Lord? <laughs> I found that to me. <laughs> He replied, one of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declare long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he'd never been born. Jesus. Wow. That's deep. Judas, the one who will betray him, also asks, Rabbi, am I the one? Now, my thing is, like, you know darn well you the one. So why are you faking? Don't be fake. He told him, you have said it. As we were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, and eat it, for this is my body. And he took the cup of water and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. A couple of things stand out to me. First of all, Jesus, Judas said to Jesus, he said, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, you have said it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, well, you said it. 
that alone foreshadowed it's foreshadowing okay that literally tells us that bang jesus judas was the one that was gonna betray shawty all along and that's crazy because all the other disciples were sitting at that table and he pretty much exposed them from jump i don't know if i said this earlier but i have no problem like um marking my bible up i found that so cool i just feel like jesus definitely was like not the one to play with because even in the passages before this like he's saying all these um parables and the religious teachers and stuff are asking him all these questions and the way jesus was reading them people from for filth top to bottom like what he he always had an answer okay always don't play with him the the bigger part of this a part that's always focused on in this specific passage is the part where he gives them bread and he gives them wine and he says like take this and eat it take this and eat it for this is my body then when he gives them the wine he says each of you drink from it for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between god and his people it is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive sins of many once a month or how often we we participate in communion and it acts as a reminder of this covenant but i think i heard something a while ago that said like the communion is not just a symbol like it is literally his blood it is literally his body and as we approach easter and as we approach the day you know like this this memorial this this moment it's important to remember that this did not this wasn't for fake like jesus literally decided to go on the cross to hang himself on the cross for our sins like it wasn't it was that wasn't a joke that was not a story that it wasn't a, a fan fiction like he actually did that for you and he actually did that for me and i think it's easy because the bible is so um it can feel far away you know how history sometimes just feels like that happened a long time ago or maybe that didn't happen because i wasn't there i don't know for me sometimes like when i hear about moments in history it's just like dang i can't even imagine i can't imagine that but no like it's real it happened and that's just like dang to think that someone would love you so much that he would send his son that he would put himself in the form of human of humanity send this perfect being down to earth allow him to walk the earth to roam the earth with you and then and then to allow himself to be stretched on this cross to be crucified to be stabbed jabbed and nailed to the cross for you and for me like talk about the kindness of god talk about god's love and so in this moment like when they're sitting at this table and another thing that's beautiful for me is like just the fact that the lord had disciples and the idea of communing with the father like they had unlimited opportunity to connect with him to commune with him to discuss to ask questions and we had that same access because jesus died on the cross for our sins we can also yeah that's where it is we can also have supper with the lord this is our supper just a reminder that like we have covenant with the father and thanks be to jesus that we still have covenant with the father you know like that is a beautiful a beautiful 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 gift that i think we dare not take for granted because it's it's that's so sacred that's so holy think about like i don't i don't sit down and eat with everybody so the fact that disciples had to do that had the freedom to do that had the luxury to do that is powerful um to do after that is journal journal then i'll grab me a, a post-it note and then i will pretty much kind of summarize what that passage is about so that if i forever like whatever reason need to go back um or want to read it again i kind of already have a have an understanding of what it's about something new out of the text next time So after I do that, I finish off my time with prayer. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> um
amen. Hopefully you guys said amen. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think I'm just going to sit and read this for a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm going to sit and read this and kind of just chill out for the rest of the night. I feel like Easter, the older I get, the more I value it and I appreciate it just appreciate it and I really feel like sobered by those moments so yeah I hope this just encourages you to take some time by the time I post this Easter will have already been gone but take some time out of your busy life to to meet with the father to meet with the Lord it does not have to be super deep it doesn't have to be more than what you're making it you know um, he just wants your heart. He just wants your communion. He just wants your communion. Uh, he just wants your communion. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to get to know you, even though he already knows. He wants to get to know you. He wants you to get to know him. Like, and I think that's the best part too. Like, when you allow him in, he will reveal so much of himself to you that you won't want to leave. You won't want to do anything outside of his will. You won't want to, to feel his presence far away, you know? And so let me get off my soapbox. We're all a work in progress. I'm still working on it. I'm still figuring it out. I'm still trying to do the best that I can and, and, and make him a priority. So I'm kind of tired too. I feel like I'm kind of tired. Okay. Anyways, I will, if I don't talk to you guys later, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.